Hello, this is Nick from Infrasonic Audio, and welcome to a video explaining the new features of version 1.4 of the Warp Core firmware. Let's take a quick preview of what we can do with some of these new features. If you're not already familiar with Warp Core, this is a stereo phase distortion oscillator with an expander that turns it into a full voice with an envelope and internal VCA. We've got two slots for phase distortion algorithms, Warp A and Warp B, and these control sort of the sound and timbre of the oscillator. In all the previous versions of the firmware, Warp A and Warp B are applied in series. In other words, the output of the distorted phaser from the warp A phase distortion is fed into the warp B phase distortion and the result is used to create the waveform. So we can see this in the scope if we begin to apply one of the phase distortions and then apply the other. We can see that the results sort of combine into one new doubly distorted waveform. The order of the algorithms matters in this approach. You can see that if we swap them, we get a very different result. In firmware 1.4, we've added a new feature that allows you to sequence the phase distortions on alternating periods of the waveform for a sort of phase synced wave replacement synthesis. If you hold the left button for three seconds, you'll enter this mode and the blue and red warp mode indicator LEDs will begin flashing alternately. Now, if we use the same exact phase distortion algorithms, they're applied sequentially to alternating periods of the wave. So like I said, sort of a phase synced wave replacement synthesis. What this also does is create a notable sub octave effect because we've kind of got a new period that's twice the length of, of one period of the fundamental. So here, this sine wave, you can hear sort of that pitch. And you can see as soon as we start to distort the either warp A or warp B, it creates sort of a sub octave perceived pitch. The phase modulation is still applied to the entire uh, phaser regardless of mode, so this won't alternate with period, but it still does some pretty cool stuff. We can really start to get some crazy sounds that we couldn't otherwise get in the default mode. In order to get back to the default mode, you can just hold the left button for three seconds. The LEDs will stop flashing, indicating we're back in the default serial phase distortion mode, not the sequenced mode. Or you can hold the right button until the pattern completes, and now all settings are restored to the defaults. So now let's do a little jam with the new sequenced phase distortion mode. I'm going to start a sequence on an Oxy-1 sequencer off screen. That's sequencing warp core. And I've got an LFO going in to warp B, CV. Let's turn on the windowing to make that sound a little more a little less buzzy, get rid of some of those discontinuities. That sounds pretty cool. Now let's bring in some drums from Trinity. <laughs> <laughs> 
So the second major feature we've added in version 1.4 is the ability for the expander to change from a gated ADSR with shared decay and release controls and a sustain level to a new triggered attack hold release or AHR mode that allows you to play it with short triggers. So previously in earlier versions of the firmware, the envelope is always ADSR, which means that if you're trying to play a sequence from, you know, some trigger generator, such as the div kit and making sound machines div skip, or any other sequencer that just produces very short triggers, all you could really do is have the attack very short, and that would allow the trigger to actually reach the apex of the envelope before the release phase is hit. For example, If we start to turn up the attack time, now it just stops working because the trigger is so short that it's not holding the gate open long enough to complete the attack phase. So in the new firmware version 1.4, you can hold the right button and turn the sustain knob on the expander. And that allows you to go from the default attack decay sustain release, which is the pink LEDs on the top. If you turn this past noon, we get to these green LEDs and the brightness level sort of reflects what's going on. So now in this mode, we've got an attack hold release envelope. If I let go, now we're in the attack hold release mode. Any short trigger will always play the entire envelope, no matter what the attack and release settings are set to. The sustain knob in this mode actually becomes a hold time for the envelope. So we can see that even with a short trigger, we're still getting that full attack phase. If we get multiple triggers while the attack is still happening, it won't reset, it won't re-trigger back to zero. So if we wanted to make these a little longer, we can just turn up the sustain, which now acts as a hold time for the envelope. And this can be kind of fun for performance because you can sort of almost get different rhythms out of the sequence based on how fast your triggers are coming and how long the envelope is going to take to complete. So in this patch, I've got the trigger output from this channel of the div skip going into a quantizer, which is sampling an LFO every time this trigger fires. This is also being used as the gate or trigger in this case for warp core in the attack hold release mode. And this allows us to kind of get this evolving trigger sequence that we can sort of play and perform with the envelope controls in a way that wasn't possible in earlier firmwares. Let's check it out. Mm -hmm. 
The final major feature that's been added in version 1.4 came from a few user requests. It's the ability to use Warp Core as an LFO. So these outputs are actually DC coupled, so that is certainly possible. And as a means of enabling it to act as an LFO, there's been a new shortcut added. So if you hold the left button and turn octave, we're actually shifting the octaves. If we hold the right button and turn octave, we get another selection type of UI, uh, the upper half of the LEDs, which are flashing or glowing kind of fast, indicates the default audio rate mode, and the lower mode indicates LFO mode with these slow glowing LEDs. So if I hold the right button, turn the warp A octave knob above noon, and then let go, now we're in LFO mode. And the way that you can tell just as a, at a glance is this LED that's kind of going up and down. It doesn't matter what Warp modes are set at, the LED always goes up and down. So while we're in this mode, the volt per octave and tune knobs no longer actually do anything in semitones. This can change the LFO from very slow, I think a 60 second period to something like 50 hertz uh, with an exponential curve and the volt per octave input now just acts as a direct offset to that frequency. The semitone tune and octave tuning are disabled. That doesn't do anything anymore in this mode. The external phase modulation input is now a trigger input for resetting the phase of the LFO. To demonstrate this, I've got just kind of a drone going pony into the Vorg uh, filter, which is like an MS-20 style filter. And right now the LFO there we go, now it's just a sign. So we can make this really slow. And then if we turn up the warp modes, we're gonna get some weird, kind of weird shapes going on. Which can get quite chaotic. Bring in this nice distorted kick drum. And then let's patch this in. This is a divided clock, and that's going to reset the LFO every two beats. Side chain that a little bit. That's pretty nice. I'm 
One additional minor but important improvement in firmware 1.4 is the ability for the second output, the 90 degree output, to uh, realign to perfect 90 degree offset with the first output if you're coming out of having it detuned. So with this right button held, if you turn warp B, we can slightly detune the output of the second oscillator, which creates some nice unison sort of uh, beating motion. Um, especially with some distortions applied. But uh, previously in earlier versions of the firmware, if you came out of this detune, what would happen was that the second output would be some in some other arbitrary phase offset because the detune was causing the phaser to run at a different rate and it wasn't resyncing when it got back to zero. So now via sort of a PLL emulation in the DSP code, we can actually resync that second output perfectly back to 90 degrees when it comes out of detune. So you can see it kind of slowly get back into place after we get the detune back down to zero. And it's always gonna end up at 90 degrees offset. This is especially useful if you're using it in the new LFO mode, where maybe you want the second output to always be 90 degrees apart for like a quadrature effect. If you've detuned it and then you undetune it, you can always rely on that being true now with this update. That pretty much concludes my overview of the updates for version 1.4 of the firmware to Warp Core. To check this firmware out, head over to the website. I'll put the link in the description as well as up on the screen. Thanks for watching. Take care.